So here we are back at the main screen. So we've just started here and it's about, we're going to, about to start creating a new diagram. But before I do that, let's focus in on the actual library. So what you're seeing here is that I have the DCRM library enabled. If I scroll down, you'll see that I have you know, a whole bunch of different generic icons in here. Um, and as I keep scrolling, you'll see that I also have some manufacturer libraries enabled. So I have ICOM, Kenwood, Motorola, and Teldu enabled right now. Um, let's say we want to look at the Motorola one here. You, again, you'll notice that it has all their mobiles pre-built in here, all of the portables are in here, um, repeaters, and so on and so forth. Um, now, I mentioned earlier that you could turn on and off different libraries. So just to show, for those of you that are admins or owners on here, at any point you can click on the menu here, and you can click on organization settings, um, and I just have it open up here, and it'll bring you to this, um, this page where in the settings here, um, you'll actually be able to see and um, if you scroll down, you can do things like set your company logo, all that kind of stuff. But if you scroll down here, you'll see this library management panel. Again, that was through the menu here under organization settings and under the settings tab. You can turn on and off different libraries as you want. Um, so, you know, as soon as you enable it, this will affect it for everyone in your company. So everyone in your company will now see these libraries. Um, and if I go back here to uh, go back here, oops, sorry, to, to our, our screen, you'll see that I'm seeing those same libraries that were checked over here and they're showing up. So I can decide to expand or close them and so on and so forth. Um, one more thing I quickly want to mention is that as a user, not, not as an admin, but as a user, you can always click on this, this little icon here. This allows you to decide how icons will appear in your library. So for example, you can actually decide to, turn, to, to filter on and off different manufacturers. Like right now, you might have the Hytera library enabled, but right now you're actually just working on a Motorola project, so you want to turn off everything else. You just want to see the icons that relate to what you're working on, Maybe some generic DCM ones and just the Motorola ones. So you can kind of filter all that on and off. And um, you can also just filter on and off different categories um, if you want. Um, and then you can also set the icon size or decide what you're or ordering things by. So just to show you, I'll do th one thing at a time here. Let's say that we want to talk about the icon sizes. Right now I have them set to medium. And that's my preference. I believe that the default is large. So if I go to large here, you'll see it'll take a sec to reload. But what you'll see is that I'm seeing two rows of icons. So the icons appear a little bit bigger and um, kind of, you know, it looks pretty good there, pretty big. But if I want to change that, you can set it, for example, to small. And I believe we're going to see four per row at this point. There you go. So now the names aren't showing up unless you hover over, but you get a lot more at a time. So, you know, if, if you get more comfortable with DTRM, you become a power user and you just want to see some quick icons, you can do that as well. So just a little trick here to, to help you out. Um, I'm going to set it back to medium because that's my preference. Um, and then the other thing, too, is you can order either by manufacturer or by category. Um, so if I order by category, what you'll see is that when I go back to my icon library here, instead of seeing D3M up here as the main category, I'm seeing all of my antennas and filters. If I scroll down here, you'll see, um, here, I'll just close these just to show you. So these are kind of the main categories I have. Um, and right now, like, let's say we want to look at the repeaters. Like, let's say I'm not sure which switch I want to use or which repeater I want to use. I'd click on repeater. Right now, I only have Motorola enabled. But if I go back here and I enable, for example, Kenwood, what we'll see now is that we're going to see all the repeaters of both. So if I, under repeaters, I'm seeing all the Kenwood repeaters and all the Motorola repeaters. So if I'm kind of making that selection between manufacturer, it can be very helpful. And I personally like to look at things by manufacturer, but that's really up to you. You can really easily toggle that as a user setting. Um, there you have it. That's kind of the customization you can do in here. Um, but now we're going to focus a little bit more on the other sections. So right now, you know, we've only talked about the organization library. And this organization library, again, is powered by this, this, this setting in the back end where you turn things on and off. These are all the icons that you and your entire company will have access to. Um, so everything that you can filter on and off here, everyone in your company and your DTM organization will see. But the other thing we have here as a second tab is your personal library. This is your user library where you can actually see all the different icons that you've created for yourself. Um, so when you go to create a new icon by default, it'll go into this library, um, but you can then get it promoted so that other users in your company can benefit from that. So we'll go through that in just a second, but just, just as a reminder there, it's the organization library versus your own custom library. The next thing we have here, and I'll get back to this in, when we get to the rack view, but this is a way for you to sync between your topology and your rack. It'll, it'll be a tool to help you kind of keep things in sync between those two diagrams. I'll get back to it. And then the last thing we have here is the search capability. So let's say that I want to look for an SLR 8000 repeater. I start typing and automatically it's bringing up um, all the relevant search results. So the SLR 5700, you know, 8000 and so on and so forth. So this will search through all of the icons you've either, that are either in your organization library or that you've created in your user library. So those are really the main components. Um, 
So let's go ahead and you know start creating a diagram, and then as we're creating the diagram, I'll show you how to create a new icon. So um, I'll start dragging out a couple icons here. Um, let's say I want a couple duplexers, and I'll go get a couple of repeaters as well. We'll go get that SLR 8000, for example. Perfect. So grab out a couple of those. I'll grab a couple antennas. So again, I'm going to use a search functionality just to show you guys how powerful this can be. Very quickly, we can kind of get these going. There we go, lay things out. I'll get a couple radios in here. Um, so let's say we're using some SL radios since we're using an SLR repeater, a couple of you know, 7550Es. Um, I'll also put in some XPR radios. For example, uh, Motorola Solutions XPR 7580E here. I'll drag out one of these. Um, actually, that's a custom one that I have, so I'll use a different one. Um, let's do an XPR 7550. There we go. So you can see how powerful this gets, right? How quickly you can kind of get going. Um, so there we have it. We have everything laid out. And if you remember earlier when I talked about the anatomy of, 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 a, of an icon, it has three components, right? Um, and how you access those. So right now we're just seeing the image, but you can very easily turn your ports on and off here. So now we're seeing the port view versus the, the icon view. So you can toggle back and forth. Um, for those of you that are power users on the webinar, you can also press V on your keyboard to toggle that for view, toggle. Um, so there you have it. And now what I'll do is start making some connections. So really easy, I can go TX to TX, RX to RX. So DTRM has some built-in rules that say that only things that should connect are able to connect. Um, so just to kind of showcase that, I'll go get a switch. So I'll hit switch here. Perfect, I'll use this default generic switch. And just to show you here, this is an IP port obviously because it's a switch. Notice how it's only sticking to that LAN port. It can't connect to anything else because they're not IP ports. So just very powerful in that sense. There we have it, and we can re-modify this link to kind of look good. So we've put together a quick diagram here, um, really, really basic. Um, but again, so the three different components are the icons, the ports, and the third one, again, was the properties. So if I double-click on an icon here, that's when I bring up, bring up the property editor. And that's when you can see all the different properties. You can decide whether you want to turn them on and off on the canvas. So you can kind of use the eye icon to turn things on and off. But you can also set some information without necessarily displaying it on your canvas. So here, for example, if the firmware version is 2.7, I don't have to display that, but it's still stored behind there. So when I come back to it, I'll always see that that information is there. And so we can kind of do a bit of work here, turn on all that information. That looks good. And we'll do the same thing with the SL7550E. So I'll double click on it. And I'll turn on that it's Motorola Solutions SL7550E. I'm actually going to rename this group because I want to, you know, we were talking about a hotel here, so I'll rename this to housekeeping, for example. So housekeeping. And when I, you'll notice that when I click out here, it's now changed it on the canvas as well. And obviously, right now I only have one radio, but I can represent multiple radios. So here, if I want to switch the quantity to be, for example, 25 and hit set, what you're going to see now is that I have 25 housekeeping radios in that group. Um, now, as far as things like radio IDs, I could also set those. It's very hard to set individual IDs for 25 radios in this menu, but that'll come back. I'll come back in the inventory in just a minute to show you how to do that. Um, so here we have it, 25 radios there. We're going to set the security group over here. They're using XPR 7550, so security will enable all this. Enable the IDs. There we go. And there we have it. So we've put that together. Now let's say that we want to, for example, add a dispatch console. Um, now, we do happen to have a dispatch console in here, but let's just say it's, it's a product you don't have and you want to create a new icon or make, put a specific dispatch console that you sell, an Aztec console or something like that. So here I am, I'm noticing I don't have what I have, I've searched for it. How do I create a new icon? Um, so what we're going to do is click on the new icon button down here. And once I click on that, you'll see that you're now presented with the three-step process for creating your icon. So the first one is to select an image. And the second one is to create your ports. And the third is to configure your properties. Um, so let's start by creating, selecting an image here. So again, you can either select an image we've we've uploaded here. We have a whole bunch of different vector icons you can you can choose from, um, or you can actually upload your own custom image from your computer. Um, so really easy to do. You just click, you know, upload here, and you select the icon, or you select the file that you want. Um, so any any image file will work. In this case, I'll just use one we have. So I'll search, for example, dispatch console. There we go. So I'm going to use this dark icon here. I like this one. Perfect. Um, I forgot to set a name, so I'm going to call it, for example, Dispatch Console Demo. Okay. Now the next step here is I'm seeing it, it's a little stretch here, so I'm just going to fix it so that it has the right height, and that looks pretty good. So you just adjust the width and the height. And then the second step, again, is to create the ports, right? So we did the image, the second piece is the ports. 
Now I'll click on a specific area of that console where I want the port to show up. I select a type, so you'll see there's a different types we have here, so IP, data, analog, radio, RX, TX, and all that. So in this case, we'll see that there's an IP port, and it's the LAN connection. So LAN, and I'll hit save. Um, and then I basically have that. I can click and drag to move it around if I want. So very easy to do there. And then I'll also add, for example, a data port to say that that's you know, the USB for the microphone. So that looks good. Hit save, and there we have it. And you know what? I'll actually put this on this side, so I'll move it over. So we're happy with that. You'd add all the different ports you want as far as that device and what, what it needs to connect to. Hit the next step, and then you would configure your properties. Um, so here, for example, I want to add that, you know, it's I want to add the manufacturer. I want to add the model number. Um, I want to know the IP address of that device. So you can add in whatever you want. I also maybe want to know the color of it. So that makes no sense, but just to show you how you can really do anything you want. And then you would set the manufacturer. So let's say, for example, here that it's Teldio and that you know, True Fleet is the default model that I like to use. Um, you can set default values or not, it's up to you. You can reorder these any way you want. So I like this order like this. Um, and then what you can also do is if you use our coding system, which I'm not focusing on today's webinar, but just so you know, if you do have your parts uploaded to D3M, you can also pre-configure a part to that device. So for example, if I look here, Dispatch Console, there we go, so I could add, um, here we go get a little more precise because we have a lot of parts that have there for example the true true dispatch console package I could I could add that and now it's sort of assigned to that to that icon by default I'll go ahead and save it to my library and what you'll see now is that I now have this new dispatch console demo in my personal library again so you have your organization library versus your um, my library I go to my dispatch console demo here I can drag it out if I double click it has those four icons that we those four properties that we set up and if I go into my port view, you'll see that it has the ports, how we set them up, and we can kind of reconnect the icons any way we need to. Oop. There we have it. Um, so really easy to do to create your own icons. Um, it really allows you to be as flexible as you want with D3M. Um, and what's really nice is because we allow you to create your own ports and set the types, you still maintain those engineering rules as well, right? Where you, know, you might be doing this as a technician so that your sales reps can do it and not make mistakes. Um, so one thing I want to mention here quickly is if you have any questions while you're doing all this, um, and if you need any support or you want a reminder on how to create these icons, at any point you can click down here on this bubble. And this chat bubble is basically a help center. Um, so it's either that you want to actually start a new conversation with our support. Um, so you can click here at any point and start a new conversation and ask for something. Or you can actually search our knowledge base right here. So for example, if I want to look like how do I create a new icon? So I'll just search create icons. And what you'll see is that it's going to show you all the different articles we have around that. So how to create a new icon, how to create an icon from an existing icon, how to save an icon bundle, things like that. Um, so just to show you quickly here, I'll open it in a new tab. Oh, never mind, I can't do that there. So it's just showing me right here at the full article on, you know, how to create an icon, um, showing the different components, what the different steps are, and so on and so forth. So you can really easily access all the information you need right in this window. Um, so there you have it. Um, I did mention here, for example, creating an icon from an existing icon, so I'll show you how to do that right now. So right now, you know, it, it took me three steps and so on to set this up, but let's say that I have an icon and I actually want to go ahead and create it from an existing one. So, you know, I, I like this duplex here, it's a great start, but I want to specifically save an EMR product with information into my library. So once you click on the actual icon here, down here right now it's saying new icon, but once I click on it and select it, notice how down here it says create custom. That's where I can click here, and actually go ahead and create a custom icon from this existing icon. So it's automatically assuming you want to keep the same picture because you went from it, but you could also go back and change it if you wanted to. We'll keep that same picture. You could modify the ports and properties accordingly. Um, so we'll keep the ports as is, but what we'll do is we'll actually set these properties to be more specific. So I'll say, for example, this is you know the EMR uh, you know, ABC duplexer. I'm renaming it, and then I'll say here that this is EMR Corp. And the model number is, you know, ABC. Um, and then I can do things like set the frequency ranges, the type, and so on and so forth, and set all the default values I want. Um, I can also maybe assign a quote part to it because that's something I'm going to want to quote automatically in D3M. So I'll assign that quote part. I go ahead and hit save. And now in my library, I now have this specific EMR ABC duplexer, and I can very easily work from it. Um, so again, we did the same three steps, but what we did is we we're able to start from an existing one just by clicking on that, that shortcut. Um, so that's, that's about it for the creation of icons themselves. Um, the next thing I want to show you is how you actually go from um, creating an icon to promoting it so the rest of your company can benefit from that. 
So I've created this new, I created this new dispatch console demo with you guys earlier. And I think this is something that my company can benefit from. Um, when I'm in my personal lab right here and I click on it, you'll notice that I have four options. I can either delete it, I can go ahead and edit that icon if I want. Um, I can create a custom one from the one we just, uh, we just did, like we just did. Or I can go ahead here and I can promote it. And what promoting it does, if I click on promote, is that it's going to allow me to actually promote that to my organization library. So it's saying, are you sure you would like to respect, res sorry about that. <laughs> are you sure you would like to request that the dispatch console be promoted to your organization library? If your administrator approves it, it will be available to all other members in your organization. So yes, I want to request that promotion. And now what happens is your admins get a notification um, and they'll get a notification in app here. And if you go to the um, library here, and I'll just, I have my, well, if, sorry, if your admin goes into the settings, organization settings, you'll see that this is your existing library, but if you click on this here, you'll see that you can see the requested promotions. So if I go ahead and click requested promotions, this is gonna show all the promotions that have been requested. So I actually have mine right here. And as an admin, I can go ahead and you know click on it. I can decide if I wanna promote it, yes. And this will let me kind of review it quickly. Awesome, it all looks good. My employee did a good job. I'll go ahead and hit save to organization library. And what will happen now is that if I go back to my organization library here, I will now see, um, that new icon is a part of it, and everyone else that's in my DCM organization, including, for example, Chris Mulcahy here, when he logs on, he will now see this new dispatch console in his organization library over here. Um, so I'll actually just reload my app here. Next time someone reloads, they'll see it. Um, but yeah, so you'll see that it's actually been added to your dispatch console. It's been added right there. Um, so this is where you can actually manage your different icons as well as an admin. I won't focus too much on this, but if you have questions, again, feel free to let us know. Um, so I've just reloaded here, and what we'll see, take a sec, is that if I go, I don't know if I have that enabled, but I'll just search it to show you, dispatch console demo. Um, there it is, so it's been added, it's right there. So just to show you that that's been added to my library, and now all my employees or my colleagues have access to it. So there we have it. That's really all about how to create icons, what they're composed of, um, you know, how to promote them to your company library. I'm very straightforward. The next thing I really want to talk about today is icon bundles. Um, and icon bundles, again, I said this earlier, but I think they're extremely powerful. Um, and they're something that you should definitely try to utilize within your company uh, because it's going to make, you know, make you and your team way quicker and way more efficient in putting together these documents and diagrams. So we can you know, in order, let's say that we like this diagram, this looks good. This is something that I feel that I can reuse for all my hospitality customers, so I want to create a bundle around it. All I do basically is I click and drag to select, and once everything's selected here, I right click on any of the icons, so I'll right click on the repeater here, and you can see here that I have a um, setting that says save bundle to my library. If I click on save bundle to my library, I'm now going to be able to name it, so I'll call it, for example, hospitality bundle. And I'll go ahead and save it to my library. And now what you'll see is that if I scroll down in my icon bundles here, I have a hospitality bundle. And what this means is that moving forward for every single project I'm working on, whether it's in this one or, or a new one I do in two weeks from now, I can drag out this pre-built bundle. But it's cool because it's not, it's not uh, like it doesn't have to stay this way. You can modify it in any way you want. You can delete things. You can, you know, you can move things around. It's fully editable. Um, so it becomes very powerful in the sense that like it's just a great starting point as template. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier that Tell you has some pre-built ones. So if I go, and, and again, you could promote that bundle the same way I promoted the icon for your colleagues to use. But if I go, for example, in the Tell you library, which I will just make sure I turn down over here. There we go. If I go, for example, in the Tell you library over here, and um, what you'll see is that I have some pre-built bundles, like I mentioned earlier. So Tell you here, I'm under the Tell you manufacturer library, and I can just go ahead and say, oh, I want to add, for example, an email gateway to this this network, and I'll drag it out, and boom, I have a starting point, and I can modify it as I need to. So really, really a big time saver there. Um, I'll just undo this to keep things clean, but you guys can see how uh, how powerful those bundles can be. So really simple, like I said, you just select the icons, right click, save the bundle to the library, and then once they've been saved, you can drag them out. Um, are there any questions that have come in so far, Chris? So far so not, good? Not yet, so far so good, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's really what I wanted to talk about today as far as um, icons, icon bundles, manufacturer libraries, how to manage all that. Um, I'll take a couple more minutes here just to show you um, kind of an overview of how everything stays in sync in D3M now. Um, so this is kind of a, yeah, just kind of a, a flyby of, of the whole tool and how it works. Um, so essentially we've put together this diagram. Um, now the next thing I might want to do is actually create a rack diagram. So how is this physically going to look um, on the network? So I would switch over to my rack tab. 
And if you remember here, um, I, I said that this sync tool here, this third, third, third tab, is meant to help you keep your two different diagrams in sync. So what it's telling you right now is here are all the items that you've included in, in your other diagram that haven't been included in this diagram. Um, so I'll go ahead and add a rack. So click add rack here to start. Now I have a rack. I can resize this any way I want. I'll keep it at 42 use because that looks good. That's what I need. And then I can start dragging out my icons. So notice here that I'm actually dragging them out from the sync tool rather than dragging them out from the library. And the reason for that is that I don't want to duplicate my inventory. Um, so I'll add, for example, my duplexers here. I can resize them any way I want. Um, so I'm not spending too much time on this, but if you have any questions, again, feel free to reach out. I'll add my switch. Um, you know, the dispatch console is not going to go there. It's going to go on a desk. So I'm actually going to go ahead and ignore. So you're basically saying, I, I, I realize that this is part of my other diagram, but I don't want it to be part of this diagram. Same thing for the antennas and the radios. It doesn't make sense for them to be part of this, this rack because they're not rackable items. So I'm just going to say ignore all. And now it looks good. So what you notice here is that little notification. I'll just kind of undo that. You see how there's a little red bubble here? This is telling you something's out of sync between your two views. Um, you can easily just at any point, oh, sorry, when you do clear it out, it'll actually show you that that notification is gone, which means your two diagrams are in sync. So I've created this rack diagram. Now I'm making sure that everything's in sync. Now let's say I just want to quickly add something that belongs on the rack um, that I haven't included before in my, in my topology. So I would just search, for example, that I want a power strip. Um, so I need to put that on my rack, a power supply or a power strip. Um, so I'll go ahead and click that out. Um, so I'll drag that out. And essentially here I can um, resize it. And now that I've actually added it to this, this, this view, if I go back to my topology side, um, what I'll see is that it's telling me, oh, we haven't added this power supply to your, um, to your system architecture here. So I can ignore this because I don't want to see a power supply on a logical diagram. I just need it back there. So I'll go ahead and ignore, and there we have it. Everything's back in sync. Um, so you can very easily make sure that, that these two things are always in sync. Of course, as with everything else in DCM, if you switch over to the inventory tab here, um, what we'll see is that every single item that I've added to my project has been added to my project inventory here. Um, so everything from the power supply to this is really a view of all the different devices. And if we look back, if you remember, we created those housekeeping icons. Um, if I want to do things like, for example, set radio IDs here, I can set you know, 100, 101. Um, you can autofill that really easily, um, same way you can in Excel. Even easier with us, if you double click on that square, it'll autofill to the bottom. And now, of course, if I go back to my topology diagram and look at that housekeeping, it's showing me a range of IDs from 100 to 124. Um, so again, everything really stays in sync between your rack, your topology, your inventory. Um, you can do different things like look at your connections and so on and so forth. So every device, every connection, everything is actually in this inventory because it's the core of everything else. Um, if you had uh, code icons, if you had your coding stuff set up, um, which in this case I only had it set up for my uh, dispatch console and my antennas, um, you'll notice that it automatically populates the code for you. So you can see that I have those two antennas and that one dispatch console. Um, I could go back here and say, oh, well, I didn't have it preset with that, but I can go ahead and add, for example, a repeater to that to not forget. There we go. I've added the DTRM repeater part. And you can keep doing that for all your different icons. And visually, you can tell when everything's been coded. And then when you go to your quote, it'll automatically be created here, um, showing you the part number, the description. Um, as if you uploaded costs into DTRM, it'll also show you margin analysis and so on and so forth. Um, so that'll auto generate the quote. But like I said, not focusing on that today. Um, but again, you can check out our help articles here. We have someone how, how to upload your pricing, how to manage that. If your Motorola dealer it shows, you, shows you how to do that directly in the channel partner, um, channel partner tool and so on and so forth. And we talked about files earlier. And the last thing I want to quickly show you is documents. I apologize. I know I'm going a little bit fast, um, but I just want to make sure we had a bit of an overview. Um, so if I want to create a new document here, let's say that I want to either create an installation document, just export a diagram, or I actually want to create a full on sales proposal. I go ahead and create new document, um, and I can go here and say, for example, I'm going to create a sales proposal. Um, I'll call it sales proposal, and I'll hit create. What, what I'm seeing here is all the different templates that, that my company has created. You can go manage your own templates very easily here if you want to, or you can create a blank document. It's up to you. So I'll go ahead and create a new, a new one from the template here. And what I'm going to see is basically it's going to take my company, company template, and it's going to... Um, automatically insert all the project specific data in the right spot. So it created a cover page here, took my company's logo, it put in, you know, Sheraton Hotel, all the information we type at the beginning. If I scroll down here, this is our like proprietary statement, trademark notice, all that kind of stuff. 
and you know it automatically put in my letter here and what's really cool is if you click in you'll see that all the all the uh, tags we have here for example we call them dynamic placeholder tags that, that have been created in my template you can tell here that it's automatically putting the project customer in the right spot everywhere if I click out you'll see that it says Dear Sharon Hotel and so on and so forth um, if at any point I change that so if I just change that for example to you know Sheraton Hotel ABC and I hit save, you'll notice that it's going to update it everywhere in my document. So Sheraton Hotel ABC, Sheraton Hotel ABC on, on the footer, on the header, and so on and so forth. Um, a bit about us, why I work with us, you know, our project proposal. It automatically put in the topology diagram in here, automatically put in the rack diagram in the right spot. And of course, if I make any changes at any point, it will update these, these as well. Um, my equipment list here, let's say I want to show all the inventory, I can show all of it. You can toggle things you want to show and hide if you want. Um, as well as with the columns and so on and so forth. So I want to hide this, these two things, so it's good. Um, and then my quote would automatically be added as well if that's in my template, and then you know the proposal acceptance. Once that's done, you can go ahead and PDF it and print it out if you want to bring it to your customer, um, or you can actually live share this. Um, so I, I didn't mention this at the beginning, and I really should have, <laughs> seeing that DTRAM is a collaborative tool. Um, I can actually share this, this document I just created with a customer. Um, so I would just take this view link, I would copy it, and I would paste it into an email and say, hey, Mr. Customer, um, you can click here to view my proposal for you. Um, or you can actually type in their email address and we'll send an email on your behalf. Um, but the other thing too, and so yeah, so that's the idea with documents. Um, so you can really share live proposals, they can view it, they'll see the most up-to-date version and, and all that. Um, but yeah, the thing I forgot to mention earlier, which is very important, is when you're in your project, you can click share at any point. And you're going to see that you can share the entire project with anyone else in your company that has a DTRM account, or really anyone else that has a DTRM account, period. Um, so you click on share there, click on project, and you can go ahead here and say, I want to share this, for example, with Chris Mulcahy. And I can decide whether Chris can view, edit, or edit, and share. In this case, I'll say Chris can edit and share because I really trust him. I'll hit share, and what happens is he's going to get an email saying, Chris has just shared a project with you. Click here to view it, and then he can actually open it up um, and start collaborating with me. And if he makes any changes at all, I'll actually, um, I'll actually see them happen live. And I also have an audit history over here of all the different actions that he might have taken. Um, and if he's in the project, I'll be able to see that he's in the project at the same time. So it really is a live collaboration tool. So if you have some colleagues that work in different offices or are working from home or so on and so forth, or you're working with a manufacturer, um, you can collaborate with them in real time. Is there a question there, Chris? Yeah, guys. So, um, Lee, I think we answered your question about the uh, the IDs, uh, the radio IDs, and how that uh, can be edited in the uh, project inventory view. And Paul, your question here: Are you able to show connectors on the diagram and cable types? Yeah. So, I'm um, just to address Lee's question quickly. I, I will show it again quickly, just in case you, um, anyone missed that. Um, so, right now, I have, you know, I'll just switch the quantity here to, for example, 12 radios. And what you can see here is that I have now 12 radios. Obviously, I can't set radio IDs for 12 radios here, individual ones. So when I switch to my inventory, that's when I can go find, okay, so under inventory, um, I have my, sorry, which one? So I have my XPR 7550 security, the 12 radios here. And I can actually go ahead and type in, for example, 200, 201, set all the IDs I want or serial numbers. Um, and then I can actually click and drag, just like you would in Excel, to autofill if there's a number sequence here or I can double click to go to the bottom. Really useful if you have a thousand radios. Um, and then when I go back to my topology diagram, you'll see that that's been updated. It's showing a range of 200 to 211. Um, so the second question you said, Chris, was around connectors and-, and Yeah, are you, able, are you able to show connectors on the diagram and cable types? Yeah, so good question. Um, so as far as cable types, uh, I'll address that one first. Very easy, you can double click on a property at any point, or on, on a connection at any point. And you could, for example, show a cable type here. We'll say that's coax. Um, and you can actually just go ahead and decide what, you know, that's a coax cable. And the connectors, you can actually list them out here. So you could say, for example, I'll just call this connector ABC because I'm not familiar with connector names off the top of my head. But you can show here that, you know, connector one is ABC and so on and so forth. Um, so you can, you can definitely log all that information there if you'd like to. Some people actually like to add an icon to show the connectors. So you could create an icon, you know, one by one icon to show you know, that there's a certain device. And instead of actually going straight there, um, in this case here, I'll just delete the connection. I'll switch to my port view. Oops, I think I had that selected so it moved. There we go. Um, and then I can actually do this if I'd like to, um, just to show that the extra step. Um, but it, it's really up to you how you want to do that. And then you can, again, show the, the, the cable property and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, any other questions? Were there any questions there? 
Let's see here. Yes, uh, from Paul, how do you format diagrams in racks only for printing, not a proposal? Yes, yeah, so a good question. So if you want to export this just for printing, there's two ways you can go about it. Um, you can click on up here, there's an export project button where you can just say, I just want to take my um, technical diagram, icon diagram, and rack diagram and download them. So if you click download, what it'll do is it'll download a zip folder to your computer and, and you'll just see here that when you open it up, you're just going to see a, an image file, which you can go ahead and print off your, off your computer if you want, just like that. Um, or you can actually just quickly create a document and say, I want to create a, a new document, a blank document. I don't care about the title. I'm just going to go very quick here. Um, and it's going to give me a page. I can switch it to landscape over here, and I can drag out uh, my topology diagram on the first page, resize it any way I want, add a second page, and then add, for example, my rack diagram, and go ahead and print that as a PDF and, and print it out or export it and so on and so forth. Um, so you can do that very, very easily two ways. Like I said, if you'd like to have your header your, your, and, and your, your footer and all that, you can do it that way or just export the image. Any other questions that's come in? No question. Uh, that we're all caught up there. But yeah, guys, if you have any questions at this point, feel free to uh, write one there in the chat or you, uh, you might be able to unmute yourself and just jump in with a question. Um, I, I think we'll open it up to questions for the next. Five yeah, minutes, so. yeah. So I, I do apologize, guys. I did go a little quickly there because we were focusing on icons quite a bit, and time time started running. Um, but I just want to mention again, if you have any questions, comments at all, um, don't hesitate. Um, and before we just kind of get into that Q and A, I do want to mention for those of you that might leave, um, as a reminder that this is 100% um, co-op eligible for reimbursement if you're a Motorola Solutions um, dealer. Um, if you're a high terror, they will cover 50% of the cost. And if you're an ICOM dealer, they'll reimburse the cost of a one-use subscription, the equivalent of that cost. Um, so just a quick, quick reminder there. Um, thank you very much for your time.